Hey y'all, my name is Eric and I'm from Games by Hyper. Uh, today I want to give you a technical overview of my interaction system. Um, it's not per se only a technical overview, you can also call it a technical guide and uh, in-depth uh, video uh, just about the system itself. The first thing will be the interfaces. Uh, the interfaces are the core of the interaction system. Um, I will show you the different interface types that I have. For instance, the can interact interface is the, is the base of all the interactions that you could do in the world. It has variables set up like, hey, uh, do I need to play an animation when I'm interacting? Uh, do I need to show a text? If the text is showing, what height does it need to be and what position? Um, do I need to show a button like an E or a gamepad button? Um, do I need to call this interaction event on the server or on the client? Basically, it is the core of every interaction that you can do from the player's perspective. Based on that interaction, you can switch on different interaction types. Uh, the most common would be the interact uh, type. Uh, that is the basic one. That's just an event that's fired. Uh, the only thing that is getting through it is a controller. Uh, of the of the the instigator of that uh, specific interaction, uh, and based on um, that interaction, an event is fired in any actor that implements the interact interface. You can also say I do not want to have it just an event. I want it to be a specific toggle. For instance, uh, if it's already on and I'm interacting with it, I only want to do this. Uh, if it's already off, I only want to do that or uh, uh, toggle it between. So you also have a Boolean option to give uh, through that interface. And the third one is a grab interface and the grab interaction type is in this case holding the mouse button and have like an immersive feeling to pull the chain or uh, rotate a wheel or something like that. It's just an uh, something extraordinary. Of course, it's not limited to only these interaction types. I encourage you to build upon my system. Uh, I think this just gives a perfect base for any interaction system. I will show you the examples right now of um, these specific interfaces. If we navigate to the interaction folder under the hyper folder, we can see the folder interfaces. And in the interfaces, we have four different interfaces. These are the ones that we just talked about. It's the can interact, the interact, the BPI grab, and the BPI toggle. Just to give you an example, we have here a button, and uh, this button, uh, we can walk towards it, and we are able to interact with it uh, from the character perspective. So by pressing interaction, in this case, with the E. So how does that work? Here I have the BP button input interaction master, and we can navigate to the class settings. In the class settings, we are able to see that it implements two different interfaces, the can interact and the interact. The can interact interface itself has all these specific interaction uh, functions that we could override. One of the core things is of course, can interact, is that true or false? Um, you can switch that dynamically. For instance, if the character does not have the required level to uh, perform the interaction, we want to say, okay, it's false. We are not able to interact with this. Just an example, we have a level manager in the level manager, uh, get a level, for instance, let's say, uh, get character current level, and only if that one is greater than 10, uh, if that is true, then we are able to interact. So that is how you're able to use uh, dynamically based on the player that is interacting with a component uh, in the world to say, hey, are you able to switch on this? Uh, this is a very specific example for a base on level, but you can imagine hundreds of different implementations based on specifically this. Another thing is, should the server uh, execute the interact call? If this one is false, it will be executed client only. And if this is true, it will be server based. And 
Uh, in some implementations, you would like uh, the server to be in control and sometimes the client. It's your choice. You can switch it up uh, based on whatever you need. Another thing is the get interact animation. Um, here I have assigned a grab animation montage. If we make it something different, it will also perform that uh, specific animation. And we are able to divine all these variables per interaction object in the world. And we can also override it, etc. So we are able to control all the interactions of, uh, of the things that we have in the world. So also the sound, also the text location, also getting the interaction text. Uh, the getting interaction text that could also be dynamically. Obviously in an inventory system, you would want to set this text based upon which inventory item uh, you are you are seeing, etc. So I would, uh, for instance, if this interact imp uh, interface is assigned in an inventory item, I would have a variable, uh, for instance, get uh, inventory item in that inventory item, get the item name, and that item name I can uh, connect into the interaction text. The other interface is the interact itself, and that means. Um, it is listening to any interaction that is coming in a, from an event. In, uh, in this specific example, this event is being called when the player is pressing the E button uh, in the world. So to give you an example, I'm walking up this button and by pressing E, that specific note is called. Let me see. We're adding a breakpoint. We're going to play. I'm going to push E and now it's going to fire because the player is instigating an interaction with this specific button. This button is listening to this interaction. Um, when this interaction is received, it will check, OK, some conditions for this specific button. And if uh, it's received, OK, what kind of function do we need to call? And here we have different events that are being called based upon the interaction that we are calling. Let's check out the interaction components. The interaction components is the core of all the, the logic uh, behind the interaction itself. It uses the interfaces, but to be able to execute the interface uh, calls, we need to do line traces from the player perspective. I have defined a basic and an advanced component. The basic component only implements um, the interaction trace from the player itself. The advanced component has extra features. For instance, switching based upon different um, uh, interaction types like the grab and the toggle, etc. But also uh, to make sure we can define interactables in radius. So the core logic can be divided into three things. That is the can interact trace, the interactables in radius, but also it requires the interaction trace channel and the trace channel is set up. I will explain these three to you right now with some examples from my demo project. We are able to navigate to the blueprints folder in the interaction system. In the blueprints folder, we can find the components, the basic and the advanced. We will start with the basic one and the basic one is uh, the minimum required for the interaction system. The first thing that we do is we start an interaction trace locally on the local controlled player. And that interaction trace is done via a timer. Currently it's being done uh, every uh, 0 0.1 seconds. So every 0 0.1 seconds it fires a trace to see, am I currently looking at something that I'm able to interact with? So let's take a look at this specific function because this one is being fired every 0 0.1 uh, seconds. And this function is a big one because it needs to do a lot of different checks. But the base is this one. It's doing a trace from the active camera and the trace channel is specifically the interaction trace. So I'm not searching for the visibility. I am searching for Am I hitting something that is blocking the interaction trace? And I'm doing that from a, uh, a current camera's perspective. And 
obviously I'm adapting it dynamically based on what kind of length your current spring arm is, etc. Uh, just to make sure that it uh, works dynamically based on how far the camera is from, uh, from the player. So every 0.1 second, it's going to say, am I finding something that is blocking the interaction trace? If it's blocking and it does implement the can interact interface, let's continue with our uh, interaction check. And the interaction check is doing a lot. It's going to check, hey, am I currently able to interact with this specific one? Um, am I looking at something else right now? Am I overlapping something? Should I uh, outline the current uh, uh, interactable uh, placing the text and a button uh, upon that specific uh, interactable attaching that button and text onto the interactable actor so if it rolls down uh, from a hill or something like that you are still able to see um, uh, the interaction text floating away uh, uh, but still uh, it fade out quickly if it's not in your radius anymore and the radius um, i mean the trace length because the trace length is being done uh, in a certain distance, say, okay, um, this is how far I want to check if there's an interactable. I'm going to show you quickly uh, this uh, debug type uh, for duration, because that gives a perfect view of how uh, the interaction trace works. The, and um, if you are stuck on something and you're finding that you're not able to find your interactable, set this one to for duration and you are able to set this to play. And now you will see this red line uh, spamming out every 0.1 second to see, hey, am I hitting an interactable? Am I hitting an interactable? And at the moment I'm going to hit one, the line will... Uh, uh, give these uh, these spots and after these spots it will uh, show a green line and you will also see that at the moment i'm hitting an interactable um, um, we also see the e to push button etc etc like this toggle fire push button um, the fun thing is i did say trace is not being done on the visibility trace so it's going to check for the interaction trace and where, for instance, with this campfire, if I'm looking like here, I am not specifically targeting the fire at this moment, but it still shows toggle fire. And I've done that uh, on purpose. Just uh, imagine you have a really small object like um, a can of soda. And a can of soda is on the ground, and you want to be able to pick that can of soda up. However, if you need to point this specific tray specifically on that can of soda. That can be quite hard and can also be an annoying gameplay experience. So what you would want is you want to have a sphere around that can of soda. And that sphere that is around that can of soda has blocking, uh, uh, is blocking the interaction trace. And then the moment it blocks, you say, okay, you're currently interacting with that, uh, are able to interact with that specific item. So here with this fire, we can see we are still able to toggle it uh, if it's more on the right. And I think I'm able to say show uh, collision. So now you will see that swear around the campfire. And in a moment, this red line is going to hit uh, this swear. It is saying, hey, uh, do you want to toggle that fire? And I've just done that to make it uh, way more easy to be able to interact. And if we have squares that are overlapping, it will just uh, dynamically switch uh, based upon which one is hit first. Um, so that actually works quite well. Let me show you that campfire from a bit more up close. So I'm going to edit that fire, go to the viewport, and here we can see the interaction swear. And I call it the can interact swear. And if we are going to look at the collision trace channel, we will see that it will only block the interaction trace. This interaction trace is, by the way, a custom trace channel 
that I made for this interaction system and it makes it really easy to be able to switch and determine, okay, um, I want to uh, be able to interact with this and not that and uh, make sure to block it and make sure it's visible, ignore it, etc. You now have full control and you're able to switch however you would like. I think that gives a really good overview on the can interact race and the can interact race uh, obviously does a lot afterwards uh, um, and that's just all kind of logic for cancelling switching outlines etc and uh, making sure the text is spawned uh, uh, if you want to go more depth you can uh, look here and uh, try to read the comments and see what's happening there but it's not really important right now to understand the core of the interaction system itself let's now take a look at the uh, uh, the, the interactables in radius what i mean with it is um, you can imagine if you play a game like uh, fallheim for instance if you play fallheim also assassin's creed etc um, there's a lot of follies and sometimes there are small objects around in the world which you probably want to pick up and you want to give some kind of a notice to the player so hey did you know you're able to interact with this item? Uh, sometimes you don't even see the item because it's uh, lower in the grass, but still you want to give a small note to the player to say, hey, please uh, uh, check out this small, my small note. And about that small note, if you look at these two buttons right here, the yellow one and the white one, you see this small white dot above it. And that means, hey, um, this is an interactable. You are able to interact with this. When I'm moving out of that radius, it is not showing anymore. And it is good to note that uh, that small dot is a different uh, 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 different logic than uh, this specific trace of the push button. So this is a perfect example of some a nice addition to say, hey. How can we utilize um, um, interaction interfaces and to make sure we are aware of it in the world, even though we do not know it directly from the player perspective. However, we're going to make sure to check actors in, uh, in the radius. Does it have an interaction block? If it does, does it implement a certain interface that we want to check? If so, please show a small dot. So if you're going to look at the interact advanced component, um, it's working the same as the uh, the basic trace and the basic trace also sets a timer by event it fires every 0.1 second you can um, uh, switch the time uh, based on your liking i like it like this it, it's quite frequent it's frequent enough but it's not as heavy as on the tick and on uh, every 0.1 second i'm going to check hey in the sphere around me, uh, am I able to find? Uh, here, let me set this one to for duration. So we can see every 0 0.1 second, I'm firing this trace. And uh, this trace is quite cheap, actually. Uh, some uh, It may not look like it, but it is a really cheap trace. And at the moment, we are able to find interactables. You will see oh, the line turns green, it will perform a hit, and it will uh, show the button above it. So if you want to debug it, you can always uh, try to set this one to for duration to check it out. And what it does, it basically just checks, okay, does it implement a can, can interact interface? If so, do all kinds of things like uh, spawn uh, the, the, the interactable radius icon above it, etc. Place any text if needed. Uh, whatever and that is all being handled in the advanced component and uh, the advanced component is a uh, 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 a child of the basic component and the basic component includes that uh, basic interaction trace however the advanced component also includes uh, a function to switch upon interaction methods and if you're going to implement new interaction methods like uh, 
well i i don't know i, I have no idea but for, for now i only have the, the interact and the grab uh, uh, as basic interaction types um, at the moment uh, you want to add something else you can open this function up and you can add um, the, your interface uh, to your liking and be able to switch okay now i do not want to perform the interact anymore i want to perform uh, the grab logic uh, just an example here i have the pull chain this right one is fired via the normal interact interface that's the most basic and the most common type and it's just switching once it's just saying hey activate it bam that's it um, this one is performing a custom interaction type and say hey now i do not want to only fire it once i want to hold it i want to keep flowing information from this controller to uh, 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 uh to this object and i want to handle things in that object based on what i'm currently doing as the interacting controller was holding it and um, you can obviously look at it uh, in detail in the code how that's implementing but the core is that you are able to adapt different interaction types quite easily and it's really sustainable to make large multiplayer games um, uh, for your liking this one is also a hold one and now i'm rotating this manually with my mouse and i think i am able to switch my camera to oh uh, well you can imagine uh, the camera should be a bit more forward but the trace is being done still from the camera's perspective and therefore this uh, still works. I think now I have showed you the core of this interaction system about the technical perspective. Um, obviously there is a lot more to it than I, what I just told you. What I just told you is the basic uh, knowledge that you require to understand this interaction system. It is good to know that the way this interaction system is built up, you can use it for anything. For instance, I'm using it for the inventory system. I'm using it for my farming system. I'm using it for interactables in the world. I'm uh, opening campfires, lighting fires. Um, um, I'm uh, looting uh, uh, my enemies, etc. Um, it is uh, really scalable and it's also replicated uh, if desired. Um, what I can show you are still a couple of examples uh, on how things are implemented. Let's check a bit more the examples itself on how things are set up so you know how you are able to switch this to your own and uh, adapt this system to your own liking. Here I have the push buttons via Interact. Uh, when we walk towards it, we can push a button and we see uh, an object is being activated. What I can do, I can select this object, I go to the details panel and I see, hey, this one is currently being called. And how is this one being activated? Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to open up this specific blueprint and we see, okay, when the player is firing the interaction, it is going to uh, trigger uh, specific functions in the BP button master, which is the parent of this specific in input interaction master. And the input interaction master is the one that's showing a button uh, from a manual input from a player. When the button is down, we saw, hey, it's going to do something. So let's take a look at this button down event. First of all, it's going to play an animation. So the button is going down. And eventually, when the button is down um, and the right conditions are met, it's going to say, hey, I want to execute this function, execute triggers. And execute triggers is a core function that I made in this specific button. And it is going to check uh, what type of activation do I need to do? Do I need to... Uh, activate all the targets that are linked to this regardless of the state if so just call the interact uh, um, should i uh, turn it off only when the switch is down if that is so specifically set a toggle interface on off uh, 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 on or off 
or should I use a custom toggle? And if I'm going to use a custom toggle, so that's more an override state, uh, then I'm going to say, well, uh, that this one is uh, is is too true, and that specific one is too off because I provide an array. Which targets do I want to turn on, and which targets do I want to turn off? So let's see how this one is implemented. So it's going to say, hey, uh, use the interaction event and turn off when the switch is down is on and currently it's uh, say in uh, this light bulb uh, interface so that's this specific actor I'm going to call that so let's try it out so this one the trigger is now down and the button is going on uh, so the light is going on and when the button is up uh, the light is going off again and what did we see here? Uh, it says turn off when the switch is down. So we are able to uh, look at this specific code. Turn off when the switch is down, that one is true. Is the trigger currently down? Uh, uh, and the, the down means uh, 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 pressed, so that it does not mean in the space. So only if it's down, uh, make sure uh, uh, to execute it. So now, it okay, it's down. So if it's down, I'm going to turn it on. Uh, and if this one is up, uh, so when the button is up, um, uh, I'm going to turn it off. I know the, uh, the words can be quite confusing. Uh, sorry for that. But basically, it's just going to say, hey, when the trigger is down in this case pressed uh, turn it on uh, when it is up again uh, uh, turn it uh, uh, turn it off so that means because th that specific checkbox is uh, is is triggered that means that this one is going to listen to the toggle event because this one is saying hey this actor I'm going to execute the toggle interface uh, as long as it implements the toggle interface, of course. So I already know if I'm going to open this specific light bulb, it will have implemented the toggle interface. So now we see here, hey, it has the toggle in interface. And based upon uh, if we say force it on or force it off, it's going to switch it on or off. I'm able to add a breakpoint here. I'm able to play. And when I push this one, it will say, hey, uh, 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 turn this one on because it, it's set to true. And at the moment, I'm going to uh, get the button up again. It will say false. And now it's going to be turned off. Obviously, I'm able to switch this up dynamically. So now I'm saying turn off when switch is down. Let's say, uh, let's try this. Uh, try this the other way around. So now uh, it doesn't work anymore because the trigger uh, is not being called anymore because it's going to skip this one, it's going to skip this one, and it's going to skip this one. And if we are do not want... Uh, uh, a, a toggle based on uh, the button down or off that would need uh, we need to have a custom toggle so we can say okay let's turn on a custom toggle it says hey which targets do we want to toggle on and i'm able to say okay i want to select an actor i think i'm able to use this uh, droplet and i'm going to click on this light bulb now i'm saying okay when that one is toggled Turn it on. I'm going to remove this breakpoint. So now it's on, now it's off. And But it, because this is custom, I am probably also able to do this precisely the other way around. So now, uh, oh, uh, here I'm able to turn it off. So in this case, when the button is not pressed, uh, when the button is pressed, I'm going to turn it off. 
but when the button is not pressed, it's on. So you see it's now on by default and now it's off. And we're able to switch this dynamically. And the beauty of this is we can make more complex systems. Uh, let me give you a good example. Um, here, this one. This one is also a specifically a default uh, um, uh, interact. However, it is using a custom custom toggle. And I want to say, okay, one light, I want to say, uh, turn it on and one light to turn it off. So here we see uh, this one is uh, uh, on when toggled and this one is off. So that one is reversed. So let's play. Now we see indeed the right one is on and the left one is off. Going to flip the switch and it's going to be dynamically switching. And we're able to activate a lot of different actors with this. So we can just click on this and we say, well, besides this, I also want to uh, toggle that one on and I want to toggle that one on. And uh, this one should be toggled precisely the other way around. So now we are controlling all of these lights that you see right here, but switching it uh, based on what we selected in this custom toggle logic. I really like this and therefore, um, due to implementations like this, it's really scalable. And toggling is obviously uh, quite custom. Sometimes you um, just want to have a, a, a normal interaction events. Um, uh, I think just like this one, this say, okay, just activate any actor. Uh, it doesn't matter what state it is. Um, uh, so now I'm able to push it and it's going to be activated. Now I'm going to toggle the fire. And when I push it, it's still going to, uh, uh, to, to say, hey, uh, uh, do something in that interact. And this is not a custom toggle. And therefore, uh, regardless of the state, if the button is down or uh, uh, on or whatever, this one is on or off, I'm just going to do precisely the opposite of what currently is active in that specific actor. Based upon all these types of interaction systems, uh, uh, you can really scale this up. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope this uh, technical guide gives you a more in-depth uh, view about the systems. Um, if you have any questions, let me know below. And of course, check this product out on the marketplace. Um, and I hope you uh, can help, uh, can use this in your system to scale it up. Bye. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, I hope you liked it. So. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime, for instance, via Discord or Patreon. And don't forget to check out one of the videos that I will be posting somewhere here. And of course, I hope you have a very nice day. Bye.